Hello everyone and welcome to my lecture series on molecular dynamics and uh, simulation. So uh, let us uh, first revise uh, what we have done in our previous uh, lecture as such. Okay, so this is, uh, let us first revise. As to what we have done in our previous lecture okay so uh, to begin uh, in our previous lecture uh, well uh, let us assume that uh, uh, we are interested in finding out some property of interest okay and this property of interest in our case was uh, binding uh, free energy Okay, and uh, this uh, we have uh, denoted our property of interest with uh, this particular notation. A was our property of interest, which now represent the binding free energy. Okay, we call uh, such property of interest as an ensemble property. Why we call it as ensemble property? Because uh, we are going to derive this property that is binding free energy of our protein ligand system from a trajectory and whatever we derive from a trajectory uh, we would denote it in such uh, brackets okay this special type of brackets. So uh, at the end uh, we, uh, we, we ended up uh, with uh, an expression like if we want to find out an ensemble property say A for our protein ligand system and uh, we have ended up with representing our, uh, our situation like we can represent it in form of an integral of our property A of Q dq why because we dealt with uh, y integral because we dealt with uh, a very large number of atoms okay but for completing this expression we would also require something called as a rho of q okay so uh, to complete this expression and to compute the binding free energy okay uh, we would require this rho of q and in short uh, this expression is sum up as an integral of a of q that is the property of interest for configuration or for confirmation q dq uh, but for doing that but for calculating this binding free energy we would require this rho of q okay so this rho of q is called as the probability distribution okay this rho of q is called as probability distribution okay uh, the value for this uh, probability distribution is given by the Boltzmann function okay so how how have we uh, described this uh, Boltzmann function or the probability distribution the value of probability distribution is calculated with this term okay and it is nothing but a, a exponent of negative gradient of the potential energy for that confirmation by k t okay divided by integral of negative exponent of potential energy of the number of uh, confirmation divided by k t and b q okay so uh, we can we can summarize it as the ratio of negative exponent of this potential energy this is capital v. v we we represent the potential energy as capital v okay negative exponent of potential energy by uh, by kt 
okay uh, where this k is your Boltzmann constant and uh, T is your temperature okay so and this is divided by again the uh, negative exponent of uh, the potential energy V uh, potential energy V of number of confirmation divided by kT dQ okay so this denominator term this denominator term uh, corresponds uh, you know this denominator term corresponds uh, to all possible confirmation of that protein and it is also called as the partition function okay so in short if you want to find out any average property of your protein ligand system we are talking about this thing if you want to find out any average property of your uh, protein ligand system you might theoretically need all the confirmation uh, of your uh, uh, of your protein ligand system and more practically uh, you know you would need some most relevant confirmation of your protein ligand system because knowing all the confirmation of the protein ligand system uh, would be you know uh, practically not very feasible therefore we will have to know some very uh, relevant confirmation of your protein ligand system okay so therefore we obtain such most relevant confirmations of your protein ligand system by running a classical molecular dynamics simulation so this is how everything is related okay if you want to uh, find out an average property of any protein ligand system you would require this uh, probability distribution and uh, this uh, probability distribution would require you to theoretically know all the possible confirmation of your protein ligand system uh, but uh, Practically, it would become very difficult. Therefore, we would at least need to know some most relevant confirmation of your protein ligand system. And to obtain such most relevant confirmation, you need to run this molecular dynamics simulation. Okay. And uh, in this lecture, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to learn which equation of motion we need to solve in order to run uh, such molecular dynamics and simulation okay so the main objective of our lecture today is to obtain the Hamiltonian equations okay so in this lecture we are going to learn which equation of motion we need to solve in order to run such molecular dynamics simulation to run such classical molecular dynamics simulation okay okay so uh, to begin with let us assume that our system is formed by n number of atoms okay maybe i will just show you what we are dealing with so that it would make much sense out of it okay so uh, what we are going to deal with uh, this system okay so say we have our protein ligand system already solvated in our uh, uh, water uh, layer okay and let us assume 
uh, that uh, there are n number of atoms that are present in our system okay the system is made up of water molecule which again if you zoom into more details uh, you can see that each and every atom in this system is represented uh, in uh, this line representation okay so uh, let us assume that our system is formed of n number of atom and if you try to visualize this our system into any text editor you would find out uh, this okay so well say for example our atom uh, sorry our system is now composed of how many number of atom we can view this line number and say our system is now com uh, comprised of this 41913 atoms okay wherein you have got coordinate of each and every atom right so this uh, this correspond this line correspond to the x y and z coordinate of each and every atom in your system okay so these three particular coordinate correspond to the first nitrogen of first alanine in your protein ligand system that is what it corresponds so this is where we would begin okay so let us assume that our system is formed by n number of atoms okay and for the sake of simplicity well let us focus on a single atom in our system and we would call this single atom any single atom from our system as i all right so this is uh, where we would begin i have shown you the system okay and now i have also shown you that our system contains very large number of atom and uh, for the sake of simplicity uh, we would only consider uh, consider uh, you know a single atom for our uh, sake of uh, simplicity for understanding okay so okay so let us begin let us uh, begin with uh, assuming that our system is formed by how many n number of atom okay uh, and for the sake of simplicity we will focus on a single atom in our system and we would call the single atom as the ith atom okay we would refer to this atom as i atom okay ith atom so uh, now our system now our atom i in the molecular system might experience a force okay now our atom i can experience force okay so this force uh, can be expressed by Newtonian equation and how can we represent our force in Newtonian equation we can express this force as the product of mass into acceleration where uh, here here this expression correspond this f i would correspond what it, it gives force that is underwent by atom i force of atom i okay and what do this expression correspond it correspond to the product of mass of atom i so this m i is nothing but mass of atom i and a i is nothing but what we call it as acceleration of atom a i okay this a i correspond to the acceleration of atom a uh, atom i m i correspond to the mass of atom i and f i correspond to the force that is experienced by that atom i okay so uh, this is based on a very uh, famous newtonian equation 
force is equal to mass into acceleration okay so again uh, we can uh, you know uh, we can again uh, carry forward this equation force of atom i is equal to mass of atom i into acceleration of atom i okay uh, we can again simplify it as mass of atom i into derivative of vi okay here uh, in 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 this equation uh, the acceleration you know uh, acceleration ai we have replaced the term for acceleration ai as derivative of velocity with respect to time okay since uh, why because since this velocity is nothing but rate of change of sorry since this acceleration is rate of change of velocity with respect to time okay so this is uh, what we have done therefore force is equal to mass into derivative of velocity okay uh, we are representing this velocity as small v and uh, the potential energy as capital v so whenever i write it as small v consider it as velocity and if i write it as capital v consider it as uh, potential energy so uh, well uh, why is that we use it uh, in such a way uh, is not very clear well uh, if you correspond if you check out any review article or check out any book usually it is a convention that uh, velocity is given by small v and your potential energy is uh, given by capital v it is just convention okay so uh, here on just uh, keep this in mind okay so now let us uh, talk about momentum as well okay uh, so when atom i experience a force okay uh, when cat uh, when any atom i it would experience a force it will gain some momentum okay when you put apply force on any object it would of course gain some momentum so now let us talk about this momentum okay uh, we need to take account of this momentum as well in such molecular dynamics simulation okay so technically momentum is defined as the product of mass and velocity and it can be expressed as p is equal to mass into velocity okay so p can be expressed as where p is your momentum okay m is mass and this v is your velocity so in this way as per uh, this particular equation your momentum is directly proportional to the mass of the atom okay and the velocity of your atom therefore greater is the atom's mass and greater is the velocity higher will be the momentum of that atom okay now you should also know that momentum is a vector quantity okay and uh, uh, if it is a vector quantity it might also need direction the magnitude of this vector quantity can be just calculated by uh, finding out the product of its mass and velocity so far its uh, direction is concerned it is assumed that the direction of the momentum is in the same direction as that of the velocity okay so now uh, let us come back to our equation that uh, we have written okay uh, 
what was our equation let us come back to our equation it was force of atom i is equal to mass of atom i into acceleration of atom i so uh, since we now know that uh, we have again simplified it to as mass of atom i and we have expressed this uh, acceleration as a rate of change of velocity with respect to time for atom i okay so in in this term okay we have got uh, the terms for mass as well as velocity therefore we can express the uh, we can write this equation in terms of linear momentum so therefore in term of linear momentum we can write the same equation force of atom i is equal to mass of atom i into acceleration of atom i is equal to mass of atom i into rate of change of velocity uh, rate of change of velocity with respect to time okay and we can write its product as rate of change of momentum with respect to Okay, so all in all what we have derived is that your force of atom i is nothing but rate of change of momentum of that atom with respect to time. Okay, where pi is nothing but your momentum of atom i. So, uh, you know these are the classical newton's equation of motion or you can call it a, these are newton's classical equation of motion well uh, to move our discussion now let us assume that the biological system like your protein ligand system are conservative okay now let us assume or let us believe that uh, your any protein ligand system is a conservative system okay so uh, what is exactly what uh, well what do i exactly mean when when i say that any biological system is a conservative system we say that the system is conservative when the potential energy of the system depend only on the position of atom but not on time okay so in such conservative system the force that is usually experienced by atom i is related to the potential energy of the system and this can be given through expression something like this this force of on atom i is given as the derivative of potential energy by the coordinate of that atom or the position of that atom okay so here your capital v this is capital v therefore i am writing it as capital capital v is the potential energy okay and the position is given by qi or you can say this qi correspond to the position of atoms or you can say simply coordinate of atom okay when we say that we know the position that means we know the x y z coordinate of that atom okay so uh, this equation represent this particular equation represent the force on atom i as the derivative of potential energy v with respect to the coordinates or the position of atom qi okay the coordinate are represented by qi 
so uh, you should always remember when i refer to coordinate of any atom i mean the x y z location of atom as i have shown in the cartesian coordinate uh, uh, coordinate present in that pdb file okay so uh, since the system is conservative right this is what i want to uh, what i want to uh, summarize over here if okay if your biological system is conservative when we call it as a conservative we call it as conservative uh, when uh, when the potential energy of the system will depend only on the position okay and not on time so uh, since the potential potential energy of our system is only dependent on the position we call our system as a uh, conservative system and uh, the expression of force can also be derived in this particular manner okay the force experienced by atom i in such uh, such conservative system is related to your potential energy and this potential energy is given by this particular expression where q is the position of atom or the coordinate of atom okay so uh, now uh, we have got definition of force with respect to you know potential energy and the coordinate and we also have uh, got the expression of same force uh, with in terms of the you know uh, in terms of momenta as well right so the force is given by momenta and the same force is also given by the potential energy and coordinate right therefore we can equate these two equations okay so it would eventually mean that is equal to minus okay so this is very very important equation okay well, let us call it as equation 3 okay let us call it as equation 2 okay uh, let us denote it as equation 1 okay so what do this equation 3 correspond how how do we ended up with this equation uh, we ended up this equation why because uh, the quantity of force is given by both momenta as well as the potential energy and the position of atom therefore uh, this equation that we have written it as equation 3 this equation correspond to the fact that the derivative of momentum with respect to time is equal to the negative gradient of potential energy with respect to position of atom i in the system and this is my friends very important equation uh, just make note of it okay so what do this equation correspond let me repeat this equation correspond to the fact that the derivative of momentum or the derivative of momentum pi is equal to the negative gradient of potential energy with respect to the position of atom i in the system so this is very important equation we will come back to the to this equation in a while okay so uh, let us now move our discussion towards kinetic energy of the system okay so if you want to express the term for uh, kinetical energy uh, in uh, classical physics the classical kinetic energy of an atom i in the system can be written using a simple expression well say for example let us assume that we are dealing with this kinetic energy okay so in uh, classical equations of motion the kinetic energy of any atom i is given by an expression ti is equal to half 
mass into the product of the velocity okay so this is how you would require uh, you would represent your kinetic energy where ti is your kinetic energy that is uh, that is experienced by atom i okay and uh, m is the mass and v uh, v is the velocity okay so uh, this is uh, what it means this equation implies that the kinetic energy of atom i okay is directly proportional to the mass of atom i and the square of velocity of atom i okay so if we multiply this same equation by mi by mi so that is uh, what we will do we would multiply the above equation by mi by mi this mi by mi will give you the value of 1 and if you if you multiply any term by 1 it would be 1 and the same okay so uh, and i mean if you multiply mi by mi with this it would give the same equation right so if we multiply the equation by mi by mi uh, you know um, technically we are not doing anything illegal here so how would this equation change okay so let us rewrite this equation the kinetic energy for atom i is what it is half the product of mass and the square of velocity of atom i so if we multiply this particular equation by mi what we will get we would get as half mi velocity of atom i into mi by divided by mass by mass okay so again we can rewrite this equation okay this equation again can be written as mi into mi would be what it would be mass square vi we have got already velocity square of atom i divided by twice mi okay we 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 have instead of writing it by half uh, i have just included in the denominator term this two okay now since we know that the product of mass and velocity is momentum right Uh, what is that we know that mass into velocity is what momentum okay this uh, this we already know since mass into velocity is momentum we can again rewrite this equation as ti is equal to pi square since everything is squared over here therefore the momentum term will also be in its square form divided by twice mi okay we have got term for velocity as well as we have got term for mass and since mass into velocity gives momentum therefore square of mass into square of velocity will give you will also give you the square of momentum and therefore kinetic energy can also be represented in term of this momentum so why do we uh, multiply uh, our kinetic energy equation in uh, by this uh, mi by mi so that we can correlate it with the momentum okay so let us call this equation as equation 4 okay so now let us differentiate equation Four with respect to linear momentum. So what do we get? If we differentiate this 
Ti that is kinetic energy with uh, differentiate this Ti with respect to the momentum this is what we are doing okay we are differentiating this term and once we differentiate it uh, and apply that formula what we would end up this 2 would come here twice Ti divided by twice Mi okay this 2 will get cancelled therefore we will end up with the ratio of momentum and mass of atom I okay so uh, we know that momentum Pi is now product of mass and velocity okay this Pi is again product of mass and velocity okay we can rewrite this equation as a differentiation of you can say this ti with respect to momentum okay is again we, we would express this uh, momentum again in terms of mass of atom i into velocity of atom i and we already have mass of atom i right let, let me be very clear right so this again this mass mass will get cancelled and uh, we would end up with simply velocity of atom i right therefore in short what we have done in short we can express we can express again this vi what is vi this velocity is nothing but differentiation of the coordinate with respect to time okay since velocity is derivative of coordinate with respect to time so next we would carry forward this thing what is velocity velocity is nothing but differentiation of coordinate with respect to time okay so how can we again rewrite this equation okay how can we rewrite this equation we can rewrite this equation as rate of change of your kinetic energy okay with respect to your momentum is nothing but a rate of change of rate of change of coordinate of atom i with respect to time why because velocity is v is nothing but a rate of change of rate of change of coordinate or position with respect to time okay so we would just uh, uh, replace this term into our previous equation okay again uh, again we can rewrite it as I have I have just written it the other way now. Okay, we can call it as equation five. And this is your equation six. Basically, equation five and six are one and the same. Okay, where your Q is what Q is Q I is what it is coordinate of atom I or the position of atom I. Okay. So why why we have done this thing? Since velocity 
of atom i is derivative of coordinate with respect to time uh, we have replaced the term for velocity with uh, this term of coordinates in this equation and we ended up with this thing so this my friend is also very important equation we call it as equation 6 so what do this equation 6 basically correspond this equation 6 gives you the relationship between the position of atom between the position or coordinate of atom with respect to time or you can say it gives you the relationship between the position uh, between the position or coordinate of atom i with respect to time and the kinetic energy with respect to momentum okay therefore equation number 3 we are talking about this equation this equation number 3 and equation number 6 collectively are called as the Hamilton's equation this 3 and 6 are called as the Hamiltonian equation well let me rewrite these two equation uh, what was equation number 3 A rate of change of momentum with respect to time is nothing but the negative gradient of rate of change of velocity uh, rate of change of potential energy with respect to the coordinate this was equation number three and uh, what was our equation number six rate of this this give you relationship between the coordinate with that of the kinetic energy and the momentum okay so these two Hamiltonian equation okay uh, the Hamiltonian equation provide the time evolution of position or coordinate of atom Q and the momenta of every atom of the system so what do what do these two equation give you the idea about these two so called hamiltonian equation provide the time evolution of position or coordinate q and the momenta that is p of every atom in the system okay so this we have dealt dealt with a single atom i okay uh, so with with these two equation it is possible to correlate momenta, velocity, coordinate and the potential energy of the system of atom i. So what we need to do is that we need to generalize these uh, formalism to all the atoms that are present in your system. Okay. In short, what we need to do is that we need to solve these two equations of motion to run the molecular dynamics simulation. Okay. So, uh, this is what it means. The Let me revise once more. These Hamiltonian equation provide the time evolution of position in terms of this Q okay this q correspond to the position they provide the time evolution of position q and the momenta of each and every atom in our system okay so this was given for only atom i therefore we need to generalize these uh, formalism to all n atoms that are present in our system Therefore, so in short, what we need to do is that we need to solve these two equations to run the molecular dynamics and simulation. Okay, so now let us kind of uh, what we have learned. In this lecture. Okay, so what we have done, we have uh, 
begin solving uh, the Newton's equation of motion. Okay, and after solving, we derived a very important two Hamiltonian equations. Okay. And uh, what we have uh, summarized or what we have concluded is that such Hamiltonian equations are needed to be solved to obtain the trajectory of atoms in MD simulation. So these are the two major features that we have done. What we have done? We begin solving the Newton's equation of motion and derive very two important Hamiltonian equation, equation number 3 and 6. So, these two Hamiltonian equations are needed to be solved to obtain the trajectory of atom in your MD simulation. This will give you an idea of as to how atom would move. Okay. So, uh, this is all uh, what uh, we will learn in today's lecture. And in uh, next subsequent lecture, I would be dealing with uh, the Taylor series of expansion and the velocity wireless algorithm. Okay, so uh, this is it for time being. I hope you enjoyed this lecture.